Hi everyone and welcome to my new video. In this video I'm gonna be talking about the device that I did in my last video. So in that video it was still in construction, it was still on a photo board and in this video I'm gonna show you how I did this device. So I converted everything that you saw on the bench, on the table into this kind of more product looking device. If you haven't watched that video, so I, I was talking about a device that is able to listen to and analyze sub gigahertz frequency and then try to make a clone of the Flipper Zero. Obviously, it doesn't have all the features that the Flipper Zero offers, but it's got the feature that, in my opinion, got a lot of attention by a lot of people and it also got my attention. That was the ability of listening to and analyzing and emulating sub gigahertz frequencies. And this device is able to do the same thing. And so in this video, I'm going to show you the building process. I took some photos of the building process and I'm going to share them with you. Also, I'm going to share the code that I wrote. So you will be able to grab the code and upload to your ESP32 development board. And you will be able to do the same thing as I did. And also, I'm going to share the application. So I did an Android app and I published it on Play Store. So you will be able to download the app and use you know the application and to communicate with the, with the board also i'm going to share the schematics before starting with the building process i would like to say that if you like these types of videos where i'm talking about homemade gadgets electronics and tech in general please consider subscribing to my channel it means a lot to me and it really helps me and motivates me to continue, you know, working, exploring and sharing with you everything that I'm going to do in my free time on this YouTube channel. So thank you for that. So let's see what we've done. So let's see the components that I used. Uh, the brain of this thing is the ESP32 development board. I've done a lot of videos about this board, so we can check them out on my YouTube channel. Uh, so this is the transmitter. It works on 433 megahertz frequency and I bought it online. The name of it will be on the screen somewhere. This is the receiver. It also works on 433 megahertz frequency, but you can choose 315 option if you live in America and everything will work as with this one an LED to inform me when a signal is detected or when we press on the replay button and we emulate a signal, a switch to power up the gadget, step-up converter in order to convert the voltage to 5 volts, so it will be enough to power up the ESP32, a charging module, it charges the battery and also it saves the battery from overcharge and over discharge. A USB connector, I wanted to have a connector on the package in order to easily, uh, you know, charge the battery. It is connected with the charging module. An 18650 battery. A prototype board. After filming this video, I saw the need of using two of them and kind of making, you know, double-sided one. Uh, and this is the package that I used. I like it. So I put uh, everything that you saw in this package and you will see the results later. This is the schematics. Uh, so the receiver is connected to the ESP32. This is the pins. So VCC is connected to the 3.3 volt uh, pin of the ESP32, ground to ground, and the data pin of the receiver is connected to the second or the pin 2 of the ESP32. The transmitter VCC to 3.3 volt, ground to ground, and the data pin is connected to the pin 0 of the ESP32. The LED indicator, so the cathode of it is connected to the ground and the anode is connected to the pin 32. Uh, I didn't uh, post the connections of the charging modules and the step-up converter because they are obvious. I don't think that you're going to have any problems doing them because everything is well written. 
I took some photos of the building process, I'm gonna show them. I put all the components on the product board and I soldered them together uh, following the schematics that I showed you before. I put also the ESP32 and it looks like a shield. After that, I glued the electronics on one side of the package. I decided to desolder the USB connector from the step-up converter in order to save space uh, just to be able to put it on the package. After that, I soldered jumper wires, put everything together uh, in the package, as you can see here. Also, I drilled some holes uh, to be able to put the USB connector and also the LED indicator. I, and on the other side, I put a switch uh, to be able to turn the device on and off. All the components were here, so I managed to kind of make a product looking device, as you can see here. It has a USB charging port, the LED is here, and as you can see, uh, on the other side, I've got a power switch. It, in my opinion, ended up great, so and I'm satisfied with the results. So let's test it out. Uh, we've got to turn the device on. After turning the device on, we've got to connect our phone uh, through Bluetooth to the device. Uh, so I named it ESP32 and after that we've got to press on the hamburger button and go to a 433 megahertz cloner. I've done also some other exercises that you can find on my channel so you can also access them using the hamburger button and if I press on the refresh data, no current error of data, but if I press on the log button and also on the unlock button and i'm gonna press on the refresh data these are uh, the codes that are currently stored and let's test it out using my frequency tester and as you can see we can read the signal and it works without any problem I'm also going to put some links about this GitHub repo that I've got. I also put the libraries that I used. You can access them and download them and import to your Arduino IDE. And this is the code that I wrote. So I'm not going to go into a lot of details about the code. So if you know just a little bit about programming, so everything is, I think, simple. So these are some methods and some if clauses and things like that so i think that you're not going to have any problems understanding it and changing to suit your need if for some reason you try to decode your car remote or your garage remote or whatever so and if you ended up not being able to decode it Maybe uh, the RC switch library doesn't recognize the protocol of the uh, device, so you might find a way. So go to the GitHub repo and see how we can add your protocol or maybe the code that uh, your uh, you know uh, device sends uh, is too big uh, for the for the library. That's the reason, uh, so it's got kind of pros and cons, so Flipper Zero has an option to press the button and, in, and the device starts listening to a signal, but this device always tries to listen uh, to a signal and decode it in that mess uh, of, you know, noise in the environment. So the developers of the RC Switch library did a great job, so did an amazing job but they obviously can't you know uh, decode any, every single protocol that is used by a lot of manufacturers of remotes and sensors and different gadgets different modules and probably if you do a little bit of research and try to improve the library or you know use some other methods probably we're gonna be able to uh, you know, decode most of the uh, devices, but I would say that this device is able to, you know, decode and emulate maybe 60-70% of, you know, the devices that are available uh, here in my, in my area.
so thank you for watching that was everything that i've got and i hope you liked uh, this video so thank you and we are gonna see each other in one of our next videos so bye bye